Good morning. As we approach the end of the calendar year, so too we begin a new year in the annual cycle of worship of the Christian Church. A new year which begins with the four-week season of Advent leading up to Christmas. Due to Tier 4 restrictions, the services last week, this week and next week from Glenburn Parish Church are being pre-recorded and will be made available through the church's YouTube channel, Facebook page and website. So as we observe and worship on this first Sunday of Advent, as always, a very warm welcome is extended to everyone who is sharing in this service. Advent is a time of waiting and a time of preparation, not just as part of the build-up to Christmas, which of course is the celebration of the birth of the babe of Bethlehem, but importantly, as we prepare for Christ to come afresh into our lives, bringing us love, joy, peace, and new beginnings. The one who in the fullness of time will come again to fulfill ancient promises and establish his kingdom. During Advent, the church is decorated with our Advent wreath, in which there is greenery to represent continued life, even in the darkness of winter. There is a circle to represent God's unending love. There are five candles, four of which will be lit during Advent and one for Christmas Day. And each of the candles has a different meaning. So today we light the first candle, which represents hope, reminding us that the prophets in the Old Testament waited in hope for the Messiah. A candle burns, the sign of our hope. God of hope, come to us again this Advent. May your hope live within us, burning as a light within our lives. Let us worship God. Our opening praise is the wonderful Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thank you. 
We come now before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as the year revolves and we come again to this season of Advent, we praise you that it is a time of preparation, of challenge and reflection. We praise you that in Christ you came to our world as a baby, and in our world you lived amongst ordinary people, revealing to them and to us the extent of your love, allowing them and us to know you for ourselves. We praise you that in Christ, after his resurrection, you came again to his disciples. When they were overcome with grief, you brought them joy. When they were in the depths of despair, you brought them hope. When they were consumed with doubt, you restored them in faith. We praise you that through your Holy Spirit, Christ is made real to us each day, as our lives are filled with power, peace and love. And we praise you for the promise that Christ will come again to establish his kingdom of justice and peace and to bring us and all his people into life everlasting. Loving God, in these weeks just before Christmas, we so easily get caught up and overwhelmed with many of the aspects of what we think we need to do. Cards to write and send, gifts to choose and wrap, decorations to display, preparation of what we will eat and drink. And this year, Lord, all of that is overlaid with our natural concerns about what our Christmas celebrations will be like, as we are restricted in what we can do, in where we can go, and in whom we can enjoy spending time with as we entertain or as we visit. Forgive us, Lord, when in the midst of all that we lose sight of the message of Advent, forgetting that it speaks to us not only of things of the past, but of your promises for today and for all time yet to come. So as we worship today and through this season of Advent, speak to us through your word, encourage us through the fellowship that we share with your people, and empower us to serve you more faithfully as we deepen our understanding of and our relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord in whose words we continue to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Old Testament, from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 64, and the verses 1 to 9. And this will be read for us by Jackie Perry.
During a week's holiday based in rural Perthshire, one of our trips was a visit to our growth, a resort to which both my wife and I had been on family holiday many, many years before when we were children. Neither of us had been back since then, and we were intrigued to, say, to see what the once popular East Coast holiday resort was like now. My recollection of that family holiday was that I got lost. Well, my parents thought that I was lost because I had disappeared from the beach where we were spending the afternoon. However, I didn't think I was lost because I knew where I was. I had gone from the beach up to the promenade and there I got onto the miniature train which took passengers on a journey along the cliff top. Having unsuccessfully searched the beach and moved up to the prom, my parents could not find me anywhere until the little train returned to its starting point. And there was I, sitting in one of the carriages enthusiastically waving. And no doubt, it was with a range of emotions ranging from concern and worry and maybe a degree of anger, moving to relief that my parents took me back into their custody and hopefully they paid for the fare for my train trip. Just as an aside, I was so delighted to see that little train a few weeks ago, since the chat amongst the crowd that day was that that particular weekend was the final one on which the train would operate after having done so continuously for in excess of 60 years. And during the following week, that was a news item both in the press and on the television news. Although on the occasion of my trip on the miniature train, I did not feel any sense of loss, only a sense of excitement. I did many years later experience the panic of losing a child when our son wandered off in the local Marks and Spencer store. And after searching without initially seeing him, the wee boy was found lost in amongst a stand of coats. In both of these confessional incidents, there was a time when neither the parent could see the child, nor could the child see the parent. There are times, aren't there, when we think that we cannot see God in our lives, and maybe even that he can't see us. But we must remember that God does see us, and that he is active in our lives, both as individuals and in our life together as the people of his church. Our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah was a cry for help from the people of Israel, a cry of help to someone they couldn't see, and they weren't even sure that they were seen. The cry was that God would make his presence seen in a very dramatic way, by tearing open the heavens and coming down. And such a powerful demonstration of his presence would be recognized by the created order and by the nations. In other places in the Old Testament, we read of God's presence and direct intervention on behalf of his people, Israel. When the people were delivered through the Red Sea, and when manna was provided in the desert, or when David had victory over the giant Goliath. These examples and other acts were examples of dramatic divine intervention. But scripture tells us that God is also involved with his people in other ways. Listen again to verse 4 of our reading, but this time as we find it in the message translation of the Bible. Since before time began, no one has ever imagined nor heard nor any eye seen a God like you, who works 
for those who wait for him. God works for those who wait for him. And isn't our current and our recent experience been of waiting? The reason that this is a pre-recorded service broadcast electronically is because we are currently in a time of waiting for a global viral pandemic to be overcome and during that time of waiting we are necessarily restricted in what we can do. Indeed, within that bigger picture we are waiting week by week and maybe even day by day for announcements which point towards a better future. And as a church, this congregation has been through an extended time of waiting, waiting for direction and clarity about the future which God has planned as the way ahead. Waiting can be, on a human level, it undeniably is discouraging. We are told by the psalmist to wait for the Lord, to be strong and to let our heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. From his own experience, he says, I waited and waited and waited for God. At last he looked. Finally he listened. He lifted me up out of the ditch, pulled me from deep mud. He stood me up on a solid rock to make sure that I wouldn't slip. Waiting is something that many of us are not too keen on. We are impatient. We constantly want to be driving forward, although we may not know that waiting is necessary and would be the best thing for us. In the translation I quoted a moment ago, the psalmist says that he waited and waited and waited. In other words, he persevered in his waiting. Maybe it has already been in your experience And hopefully it will be in the future that no matter how long it takes and no matter what we have to go through, when we get to the place that God has planned and provided for us, we will gladly and gladly accept and confess that it was worth the wait. Although we become frustrated at waiting, if we are honest, we maybe get frustrated with God for keeping us waiting. But it does us well to remember that God is not bound by time. He is the God of eternity. While we are mortal and all our time is in God's hands, as the hymn writer says, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. Although we acknowledge that and sometimes quote it, There undoubtedly are times when we think that God is being slow, slow to reveal his will for us, slow to answer our prayers, that somehow we are being held back, and that might be because we are not ready for what God has planned for us. The apparently slow pace, the waiting, is an integral part of the gradual unfolding of God's plan Because like any good plan, there must be proper and effective preparation or the plan is likely to falter. There is a challenge for us to grasp that the time of waiting is a time of preparation and thus it is a time of great value in which it is our responsibility to prepare ourselves in prayer and devotion for the future to which God is leading us. And as we wait, remember too that through his life, Jesus experienced times of waiting for the right time to begin his ministry of teaching, of healing, of restoring. Waiting for the time when he would sacrifice his life for us. Waiting for the time when he would return to his heavenly Father. And now he and we must wait for the time of God's appointing when Christ will return in glory and God's plan will be finally and and fully revealed. Welcome to the season of Advent, the season of waiting and preparation. Let us use it wisely and well. Amen.
And now our prayers for other people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through these Advent days, as we wait for the coming of the Christ child, we remember that there are many people for whom waiting has become an unwelcome and normal part of their daily lives. And so we pray for them. People who await the results of exploratory medical tests. People who await delayed surgery and the release from suffering which that should bring. People who await decent and adequate housing. People who await the opportunity of employment and the independence and dignity which that brings. People whose earthly life is in its final days as they await its closing, that they may rest in your peace. People who wait and watch as they seek to bring comfort to the one they love. We remember too that there are people for whom their waiting is a time of excitement and joy. People who anticipate and await the arrival of a new life within their family. People who await getting the keys to a new house, maybe their first home. People who await the welcome opportunity of a new start in life. People who have found new meaning and purpose in their life and await with anticipation all that lies before them. Lord our God, for each and every person and their individual situation, we ask that you would be with them in their waiting, guiding and supporting them at all times. We pray for our world, which awaits an end to division and discord, hostility and hatred, poverty and homelessness. And we pray that the people who have been entrusted with the responsibility and power to make decisions and to take actions to realise these aspirations will do so with integrity, with understanding and with compassion. We pray for your church as it awaits the coming of the kingdom of heaven and through that time of waiting as it seeks to discern, to follow and implement your will in the places to which you call it and in the lives of people there. Gracious Lord, we pray for our loved ones and for ourselves, that we may not only wait for the coming of your kingdom, but that we might hear and answer your call to fulfill our role as we share in the work of the church to the glory and praise of your name. These prayers we offer in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King.
and now words of blessing. As we wait and prepare for the coming of the Prince of Peace, may we do so knowing the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. <laughs>